What's Jesus doing when the storm hits? The impossible. This is almost unbelievable. That in the middle of a storm that scares professional fishermen, that's who's in his boat. Men who have seen storms their entire life, they're scared enough to believe this one's the big one. This one's the category five. We're not surviving this, dude. My boats are going down. Oh, where's Jesus? He can help us throw water overboard. And somebody goes, oh, well, Jesus went down to take a nap. He's, he's in the bottom of the boat. Um, there's no way Jesus can, can sleep through this, right? Let's go see. Shake him, wake him up. Their question is, Lord, don't you care that we're about to die? You care so little that you have fallen asleep. And Jesus wakes up, walks to the edge of the boat, peace be still, storm gets calm. I think everybody gets calm. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Like, now I'm a little embarrassed. You know, like, oh man, I was, I might have crossed the line there with that whole master don't you care about us line. Um, let's just be real quiet and see what Jesus does. He goes, what, what happened to your faith? When Jesus says, let's go to the other side, you're going to make it to the other side. How you get there is the important part. It's time for us to learn that the point of this story is not so that you and I can go through another class on breakthrough and learn how to rebuke storms. It's so that you and I can learn that when Jesus is in our boat, the best option we have is to rest. You know what you should be doing when this storm hits? Why don't you go snuggle up next to Jesus and take a nap? Because Jesus told you when you got on the boat, hey, Let's go to the other side. And if you trust that Jesus knows how to get to the other side, the safest place in the boat is nestled up next to Jesus going, hey, if you're sleeping, I'm sleeping. If you're freaking out, I'm freaking out. And to this day, he ever lives to make intercession for you, which means that Jesus Christ raised from the dead to put the life of God in you and then be a representative in front of the Father of who you are. And so if Jesus has it, you have it. I tell people this all the time. Here's the only thing you need to worry about as a child of God. The only thing you need to be concerned about is you need to be scared to death. Is Jesus going to mess up today? Because if Jesus messes up, you're in it deep. Now, I think you're all right. That's the issue you need to solve in your heart. This isn't about me, it's about Jesus. If I rest in Jesus, I get to the other side of my situation in life. What is my situation? Listen, I don't know what your storm is, and I'm not mocking the storm, and I don't even blame these guys. Let's be honest, this is what I would have done. I'm not going to go down and sleep in the middle of a storm, especially when professional fishermen are asking me for their help. I mean, if they think we're going down, I'm, we're probably going down. Jesus has already told us to go over to the other side. It shows us that the, the level of trust even in Jesus isn't quite there yet for them. I'm not mocking the storm. I'm not even mocking their response. It's taking me my entire life to learn how to at least get a couple Z's in the middle of storms. But it's what I want to encourage you to do is to learn to rest in the goodness of your father when you're going through the trials of life. Learn to rest in the fact that he's got me. Even if I die, I'm safe. How am I safe if I die? Because if I die, I died in a boat that had Jesus in it. I, I mean, wherever I am, he is also. What's going on in the world? Don't attribute it to your father that loves you. If, if the storms of life were from God, Jesus was antichrist when he rebuked the storm. Because if the storms in life are from God, you shouldn't rebuke the storm. You're rebuking God. If you truly believe that whatever sickness or hurricane or disease that has hit this planet is from God, you, why would you be speaking against it? You would be encouraging it because it's the only way people are going to learn. Let's let all hell break loose because that's what God wants to happen. 
But we know somewhere deep in our heart that's not the heart of our Father. And it's why we stand against those storms. Because we know that it's not what God wants. But what's caused a lot of people to turn to atheism or to become agnostics, like, there's a higher power, but He doesn't love me enough to keep me from this happening. There's a higher power, but He didn't stop rape. There's a higher power, but He didn't stop murder. There's a higher power, but He didn't stop kidnapping. There's a higher power, but He didn't do this. So He must not be worth serving. That's been a lot of people. You know why? Because we're not seeing God in our boat. We're seeing God outside of our boat rocking it. Whatever storm you go through, Christ is in it with you. So I think when you get home and say to him, where were you when this happened to me? He's going to say, I was right there. It was happening to me too. When you cried, I cried. When you wept, I wept. When you hurt, I hurt. It's the only way I could really understand you was to be you. <laughs> 